Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. It was a great three-day weekend, and I hope you got some rest and you got to play, explore, and you go outside. It rained a little bit last night, so if you go out today, you'll see maybe some new creatures in your garden. Maybe you'll find a snail or a salamander. I uh, hope you do go outside this morning. We have some exciting things coming up this week. One is at one o'clock today, we have a bonus meeting. So you just come back to meet with me and we will go to a special artist talk. And the artist today is Christopher Eliopoulos, the one who made this. And he's invited us to go to a very special online meeting at a library in Florida, but um, we can do it right from our very own homes. And he's gonna teach drawing or read a book. And then, remember our friends at Cuckoo Kangaroo, they're having a huge party on Thursday. So on Thursday morning, we have a, a bonus meeting and we get to exercise with Cuckoo Kangaroo. And then on Friday, the author of Super Satya Saves the Day saw Mrs. Barber's video where I read this great book and how much I loved it. And she wrote me a letter and said, Mrs. Barber, I love the video. Can I do a reading for your class. So on Friday, the author of that book is going to come to our meeting as our special guest. So this week's a very exciting week. Um, this morning, I'm gonna read a brand new book called Giraffe Problems, sent to us by a donor. That means somebody who donated to our class. And then I'm gonna draw, doodle some uh, quick giraffes. So today's, you just need a pen or a pencil. Um, if you want to do the activity with me. So it's the first time I'm reading it. I read the uh, reviews of this book that is very funny and very good. It is by Jory John, illustrated by Lane Smith. Jory John wrote um, Bad Seed that we read. And Lane Smith wrote, um, I think, wrote that book about the fairy tales that was a little bit different. Um, with octopus and the, I'll find it another day but I, th I think that's what Lane Smith wrote or illustrated what oh you've noticed my neck and you can't take your eyes off it I honestly don't blame you one bit it's a pretty tricky thing to ignore this neck yep it's just a neck 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 and more neck there's nothing I can do about it, believe me. I've tried. It doesn't matter if I shrug or hunch or scrunch or bunch myself up. My neck is still here. It's here and it's everywhere all at once. Sheesh. So gather around and stare all you want. Flip through the pages and gawk. Or don't. Read my lament or simply move on. It's not going to change anything. I've already said too much and the book hasn't been started. I'm probably making you feel bad. I seem to have that effect on folks, myself included. So you're still looking at my neck, huh? Right? It's hard to see anything else when this neck is around. Sigh. That was the end page, um, a little sneak preview of the story. Draft Problems by Jory John, illustrated by Lane Smith. I feel bad about my neck. I do. I can't help it. So this book looks like it was made with collage um, and different brush strokes. Um, there's a lot of texture in the picture. It's too long, too bendy, too narrow, too dopey, too patterned, too stretchy, too high, too lofty, too necky. Yes, my neck is too necky. Everybody stares at it. This guy, that guy, him, her, them, whatever that is, her again. Yep, I feel bad about my neck. I've tried dressing it up. I've added a scarf, two scarves, a bundle of scarves, a mountain of scarves. I tied, I've tried bow ties and regular ties and both. I've tried hiding it away I've used shrubs. I've hung out in ditches. I've stood behind trees. I've spent time in the river. Other animals have necks that just uh, work. 
Take a gander at the zebra's neck. Stripes always look good. So classic. Quit staring at me. Or gaze upon this elephant's neck. Strong and powerful, yet graceful. Stop talking about me. Or glimpse this lion, whose neck is adorned with glorious mane of flowing locks. What a sight. How inspiring. Why can't I have a neck like that? Are you always this loud? My mom says I should be proud of my neck. She said other animals would love to have a neck like this. Yeah, right. No offense, mom, but nobody wants this neck. It's a neck only a mother could love. It all makes me want to hide until the sun sets. Sheesh. Good evening. I've been admiring your neck from afar. Oh, how I wish my neck looked like yours. I'd get so much done in a day. Goodness, I can only imagine all the reaching and grabbing and looking around I do. I'd accomplish many of my goals for sure. Meanwhile, I'm saddled with this excuse for a neck. Here, watch me try to stretch it out. Ugh. See, that's about as far as it goes. Pathetic, right? It, it's basically, I'm basically necklace. Sigh. You feel bad about your neck too? Yep. Huh? I'm Cyrus, by the way. I'm Edward. It's lovely to meet you, Cyrus. Can I tell you something else? Edward. Of course, Cyrus. Ahem. There's a hill in the distance which you can on that very hill for seven straight day, which you can surely see from your great vantage. I've stood on that very hill for seven days now, staring skyward, watching as a single piece of fruit, a lone banana, slowly changed from green to yellow, ripening. I've endured windy nights and unseasonably brisk mornings with very little sleep And as I waited and waited, hoping against hope that the fruit would drop before me so I could sample its sweetness and nourish myself in the process. Yet day after day, I felt like such a fool as I stretched my neck toward those greedy branches only to be limited by my own physical shortcomings. You want a banana from a tree? That's what I said, yes. Plunk. Here you go. Wump. Oh, you did it. You made it look so easy. Munch, 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 munch. Delectable. So that's what a banana tastes like, huh? It was worth the wait. Edward Facey. Your neck is impressive. It allows you to do all do amazing things. For instance, you just solved my week-long banana dilemma in 10 seconds. Well, thank you, Cyrus. I think you have a swell neck, too. It's elegant and dignified, and it works well with your shell. That means a great deal to me, Edward. So do you like bow ties, Cyrus? I, I'm i not sure. I have very little experience with them. You look wonderful, Cyrus, as do you, Edward. I feel good about our necks, Edward. Thank you, Cyrus. I feel good about our next Edward. Thank you, Cyrus. For once, so do I. Yes, for once, so do I. That was an amazing book. So many things. The artwork was amazing. I liked the page turns and how some of the pages were horizontal and others were vertical. I even had to open a page up. This is a highly recommended 10 out of 10 book. Um, I also like the lesson taught here. I bet you noticed that there was a lesson learned by Giraffe that the way that Giraffe is, while he was unhappy about it, makes him special. And that theme has come up in stories before. The thing that sets you apart, that you're like, oh, I just want to be like everybody else, is the thing that makes you special. That's the thing that is just you and your very own special thing. Might seem like a shortcoming, might be your best thing, like Giraffe could get a banana from a tree. 
okay, I'm going to doodle some giraffes. And just like the author of um, the illustrator of this book, um, maybe I'll do something fun on the giraffe. So I'm just going to start with uh, two. You can make your giraffe any way you want to. You don't have to make my giraffe. I'm just doodling some giraffes. I'm going to make, um, that's an O with an O. That's his nose. Those are little antennas thingies. I don't know what they are. Horns? Ears? Ears look a little bit big. That's okay. I might make a few drafts. And I want to make an exaggerated long neck. That's what's silly. Mine's cartoonish. It is not realistic. And there is his body. It's another oval. This one I've decided is a boy. But this is not going to be all boys. And I'm going to make four legs. And my pictures are very two-dimensional. My pictures are flat. I don't add very much dimension. That's just like how I like to draw. You draw your way. That's my giraffe, number one. Well, I can make a different kind of giraffe. Could I make a giraffe whose head is a rectangle? Would that work? Let's see. Same idea. He's going to look forward. He's going to have a rectangle nose. Two dot eyes. Rectangle ears. I'll leave off the horn things. Rectangle neck. Rectangle body. Does it still look like a giraffe? I think people could look at this and tell that it's a giraffe, even though a giraffe is not a rectangular. So here's a girl. She will have rectangular spots. I think she looks like a giraffe too. How about a triangle giraffe? Could we do it? Now it's going to look like a pizza face. Triangle giraffe. Triangle ears. Oh, it's starting to look like a fox. I'm just trying an experiment to see if shapes could make a giraffe. My giraffe certainly looks like a fox. <laughs> anyway, play, make some art, make something of your very own. I think um, this one is the funniest one. This one worked out better than I thought. This one's the most regular. Which one do you like? I'll see you later. I love you very much. Bye.